All right, uh, this is uh, Bilgi Music Seminars, and um, this is something that we've been doing for a while in Istanbul Bilgi Music uh, University uh, in music department. So the seminars started as like individual events and during a certain time, the seminars became a part of our uh, new music festival, uh, which was happening throughout the year, especially during the springtime. So the seminars were part of that. And now um, uh, over the years, uh, it became uh, they claim, let's say, their own identity, they became an individual thing that the music department uh, does. So uh, for that, uh, we are really grateful to the, all the participants that has been participated and shared their knowledge and their experience with us. And currently, we'll uh, just want to extend that gratitude to Ozbuk Berber as well, which I will introduce very soon. So uh, before uh, going into the details, the seminars are usually on uh, theoretical side with a little touch of practical side. So there's like the theory and the praxis that's going on at the same time. These are not workshops per se, but they some, some of them just tend to become one depending on the participants desire. So it's up to the participants to define and design the internal uh, content of uh, the, 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 the seminar, basically. So um, the technically speaking, there are very few things. First, there will be a presentation uh, with the uh, presenter, in this case, Ozbuk Berber, and then there will be a Q&A session, the questions and answers. And you can, uh, we will kindly ask you to turn off your camera uh, while during the presentation uh, because of uh, some kind of regulation with uh, personal rights and uh, so uh, something like that. So, um, and then uh, uh, contradictorily, uh, we would want you to. Uh, open your cameras during the Q&A section if you're asking questions and everything. Um, there is the chat and I think you can type also some questions over that during the presentation and we'll just get that. But uh, it's, for us, it's better to just separate these two sections. Unless the presenter wants something else, he will communicate that to you himself in this case. All right, so um, this first presentation is uh, Ozbuk Berber's uh, spirals, and this is his personal and idiosyncratic way to approaching the pitch material in composition and improvisation setting. And uh, while Oz will give you details about the content of the presentation, let me give you some details about Oz. He's a wonderful bass, bass clarinet player and wonderful musician and friend of mine for over I don't know how many years, so I stopped counting after a while. So um, he, he, we're really grateful that he uh, just uh, accepted to do that. And let me uh, uh, say that this presentation is a part of a presentations that's just gonna uh, follow uh, Ozo's presentation. And these three presentations that uh, we will uh, just tell you uh, uh, and uh, if you can go and check the poster with me, the Advanced Rhythm for Performance and Composers by Tobias Klein, and working with a composer, sharing personal experiences, uh, working with Lahanman, Lewandy, and many others, Fi Schutten, uh, are uh, three, uh, two, in total three presentations that are dedicated and they are part of uh, this uh, bass clarinet Festin, Festin, uh, I hope I pronounce it well, the bass clarinet festival that is biennial. Uh, and it's organized by uh, uh, Netherlands institutions. Uh, and uh, this uh, uh, Istanbul part is uh, also uh, supported uh, by uh, the uh, Consulate and Cultural Affairs of Netherlands here. So Oz can give you uh, more details about this. So uh, after Oz next week and the week that follows, we will have Tobias and Fi. So uh, we, we expect you to uh, just join that seminar as well. 
So, uh, without further ado, uh, let me just uh, leave the floor to Oz Berber with his spirals and pitch content for improvisation and composition. So, thank you for coming, thank you for joining, and uh, enjoy, please. Thank you. So, thank you very much. Um, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Wonderful. So, um, uh, okay. Oh, apologize for that. Okay, I'm back. So, um, my name is Olsbuk Berber. I'm uh, joining you today from Amsterdam, where I've been uh, living uh, at least in the last 20 years or so. And um, I play the clarinets, mainly the bass clarinet, but all the other clarinets as well. Um, just a couple of more words on the bass clarinet festival in Dutch. Uh, it's called Bass Clarinet Festijn. Um, which is mainly organized by Tobias Klein and Fies Gauten, who are going to be the other two presenters uh, of these series. Um, what we three share in common is that we all studied with Haris Parnai here in Amsterdam uh, uh, about, about 20 years ago. And uh, Hari was, um, he, he could be considered the most important figure in, in putting the bass clarinet instrument as its uh, place as a, as a solo instrument in contemporary repertoire, um, particularly in regards to his dedicated uh, work uh, and collaboration with uh, many of the amazing composers uh, of, of the time uh, being the, mainly the second uh, half of the 20th century, including uh, Stockhausen, Kagel, uh, Ligeti, uh, you name it. Uh, he, he, he has uh, collaborated with composers to build a repertoire uh, for the bass clarinet, uh, which exceeds uh, over 500 uh, solo pieces. Uh, Fies Houghton will uh, probably talk to you m more about that, but I just wanted to give you the co context that uh, we uh, um, all studied with, with him. Uh, Tobias, uh, Fee, and myself, and I see that we all found our own unique ways coming uh, coming from uh, what we um, what what we took from uh, what what um, Hari had to offer to us. So I think we we all came up with unique uh, ways to uh, carry carry on uh, with, with our voices. And um, what I do, um, I'm, I consider myself mainly an improvising musician. I do compose as well. Uh, I have written a lot of uh, commissions for various ensembles and such, but I mainly consider myself as uh, a, uh, an, an improviser, a performing uh, imp improviser. And that's where I, I would I would like to uh, draw your attention to how I um, how I basically see what co improvisation is uh, being not so different than composing. Uh, um, a little backstory about uh, how I came to um, publish this book. Um, which I called Spiral about a couple of years ago. Um, some of you might, might already know, uh, some, some of you not. Um, I'm a visually impaired individual and that's from birth. And that pretty much um, informed influences, got on the way, uh, worked on my advantage and all, all kinds of things, but it was uh, quite, it has been quite uh, 
quite a, quite an important pillar uh, for me to uh, fight against to uh, come uh, come at peace with and go away from it, ignore it, uh, all of that. Um, I'd, um, I, I grew up with, um, I grew up in Istanbul hearing all kinds of music uh, in, the, in the 70s. Um, and I was first drawn to uh, uh, jazz uh, when, I, when, when I was uh, a teenager. I, I studied all the jazz standards, memorized the hundreds of tunes. Uh, that's kind of uh, around the time uh, Tolga and I became friends and uh, uh, kept um, sharing uh, our, our knowledge with, with each other. Um, then when I wanted to study at the conservatory in Istanbul, I hit the first uh, barrier uh, about my site being that they said, oh, you, you, you can play, that's fine, but uh, you, you can't see, so we can't take you. And I was like, I can't see what I can hear and I can play. And they're like, well, you can't see a conductor, you can't see notes, you can't study, there's no point in you studying at the, at the, at the conservatory. And I was very uh, angry at the time, but very determined, kept doing what I did. Um, and again, going back to Hadi, Hadi Sparnai, um, my former teacher uh, here in Amsterdam, um, when I first met him and uh, told him that I would really like to study with him, uh, and uh, he was like, play, I played, and he's like, okay, fine. Uh, and I'm like, well, there's a problem. I don't, I don't see, I can't, I can't see the notes. I know what notes are, I can write notes. Uh, but I cannot sight read. I cannot uh, play music with my sight. Uh, how how do you think that that's going to uh, inform uh, the uh, the studies? And he was like, "That's my problem." Uh, so that that was the attitude, which I have to uh, I have to say, which led me to uh, really really find um, what, what I documented in, 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 this, in this book. Um, the, the book, um, if, uh, if some of you have already uh, had a chance to check out, um, it documents, demonstrates, and suggests um, um, different ways to approach what I did, which is finding a unique system that one can refer to and limit themselves when improvising. And I came to the need of researching such a seemingly niche topic uh, after having gone through uh, various phases of struggle dealing with existing ex existing um, uh, si systems people use uh, and or ignore or fight against when it comes to improvising music. Uh, first of which was playing improvisation over a preset harmonic structure, which is a very common way to improvise on tunes, uh, like pop tunes, rock tunes. Uh, the, the, the blues improvisation is, uh, a very uh, common and very easy to understand example. All the, all, all the repertoire as we know and refer to as jazz standards, which, which are now about thousands of tunes, uh, are uh, re results of this approach, which if, if, if I may to summarize, 
is um, basically completely dependent uh, on the Western harmony and the way, if I may, if I may call so, right notes and wrong notes, the concept of right and wrong notes, and when a note, just an abstract note, any note, when that can note be the correct note versus in about a couple of seconds later, it can become a wrong note, which is the result of um, harmony being tied to composition of time. As, as you may all um, uh, very well know, most Western harmonic music uh, is organized and predefined harmonic pro progression and it, it, um, uh, it directs the entire um, outcome for the sonic outcome in relation to which vertical notes are tied to which point in time. Um, when, when I looked into one of the other approaches I studied, which uh, we may roughly refer to as modal music, which which is um, um, then decoupling the uh, uh, necessity of which note should be played when in time, uh, but just being strictly um, using a strict uh, set of notes, uh, which in this context call, called a mode. Uh, some of old church music, a lot of uh, folk music from around the world follows this format. Um, both of which share some com common ground, but to me, the main difference was that in modal music, you are not necessarily um, forced to follow time the same way you're supposed to in harmonic music. And then I come across this whole other world of it, world of improvised music, which most people refer to as free improvised music, um, which dates back as early as uh, early 60s, I believe. Um, among the circle uh, of people who identify themselves as strictly players players of strictly free improvised music um, i was fascinated by the um to me then later felt like a dogma that it was almost um strictly forbidden to play um recognizable rhythmic patterns and recognizable pitch structures so it was uh, in expanse. Um, the, um, the, the aim was to explore the, the wide ranging timbral possibilities of every instrument has to offer. Uh, but that was to me done in the expense of uh, neglecting uh, some, some, some of the most uh, um, uh, 
historically well established uh, elements uh, of music make, making, which had a point in itself, and I, I do respect that. But I had a personal, uh, I hit a personal uh, wall exp exploring all of these range of things. Uh, and by that, by that time, I was already really uh, starting to be interested in contemporary composed music. But again, I, it, it was just almost uh, impossible for me to become an interpreter of thorough, thorough composed uh, uh, contemporary uh, composed mu uh, music uh, um, due, due to my uh, uh, visual impairment. So I, I've gone through uh, painful listening sessions uh, um, of, for example, listening to uh, Schoenberg string quartets, like put, putting the, a CD player on loop uh, uh, 20 times in a row, literally, uh, in hopes to uh, internalize some of that language uh, and again, in hopes to uh, have it naturally come out of my plane. Of course, good luck with that. I mean, some of that might happen if, if you uh, uh, expose, to your, you expose yourself to some information over and over again. Um, but uh, I, I also really wanted to know what I was doing. So uh, I was craving to uh, find ways that I can rely on. Which, which was not um, either one of the three um, paradigms that I have mentioned uh, a few minutes ago. Um, when, when I decided, okay, I should, I should, I should not just keep having magical thinking and hope that this will just uh, come out of me. Uh, then I tried to study and see if I could improvise serial music, which if, if you can follow what I'm talking about and if you have ever tried even memorizing uh, something that is serial, uh, at least to me, it was just extremely painful. It was uh, I, 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 I could come up with uh, a twelve tone uh, series and uh, try to memorize it and to improvise, being strict, uh, following that series strictly. I could probably only do it at. Uh, playing whole notes at met metronome 60 or something like that. It just is such painful brain gymnastics that uh, it, it, was, uh, it, it was like, okay, that, that's just not gonna happen. So I have to find a way to come up with using, and again, j just to uh, inject the uh, one, one, one of the main, uh, reasons why I went through all of this was that I was just uh, too interested in uh, playing quote unquote regular pitches. Uh, I'm totally uh, fine and happy playing just n noises and textures and breath sounds and uh, unrecognizable uh, complex uh, gestures and uh, uh, as such, but I'm also just, uh, ju I just really, really enjoy playing quote unquote melodic lines. Again, uh, that would be uh, a whole other um, panel discussion topic, what is melody? Um, so, uh, but I didn't want my, my playing to rely on uh, Western hierarchical harmony, neither did I wanted to rely on uh, some 
just like scale based or modal uh, improv improvisation. Uh, I wanted it to sound fresh and free, yet very uh, coherent. That was my goal. Um, and the documentation in, in, in this book is the result of more than 15 years of researching this and coming up with uh, my, my own uh, suggestion to deal with this uh, question. Uh, what, what, one of the personal reasons I uh, bother telling you about uh, this backstory is that after I showed you how it sounds when I interpret it, or after you decided to uh, um, go through a painful however many months or whatever time period to really study the entire book, uh, if, if you decide, like, it, it just doesn't say anything to me, uh, it, it, it's, it, uh, it's totally fine. What I'm also trying to share with you is that if you come up with su su such a question that urges you to 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 um, to challenge the existing paradigms uh, just put in the time and you 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 you, you, you might uh, end up um, creating something that at least is meaningful to you and maybe some people will also uh, um, use it or not so um, Back to the spirals. What is a spiral? Why do I call it a spiral? What I call a spiral is a series of pitches. That's the simplest description uh, of what a spiral is. So you, you can say, well, then it's a scale. And I, I would say the, the main difference is that in what I call a spiral, every, every no note is a pitch and there is no pitch class, which means in the series of notes, um, every single one of the notes is tied to their register. To be even more technical, we can even just call it a series of frequencies. Because uh, when you just talk about C or D, E flat, um, there's C1, C2, C3, and these are all different frequencies. And in most scales, these these repeat uh, whereas if you just if we just see this as a series of frequencies then it just uh, opens up a whole world of new possibilities that every frequency is just that frequency so if you if you come up with a a series of um, 20, uh, 20 pitches, then every pitch is just tied to their range. That, that at least enabled me to look at pitches in ways I haven't before, and it enabled me to examine and explore and study my instrument in ways I haven't before. So um, I would like to pause and play a little example for you guys.
example I just played, um, I'm going to happily and bravely claim that I have not played any wrong notes. Uh, <laughs> what is a wrong note in this con context? I gave myself the ta task of be strictly only playing one spiral I, I made one previously determined spiral. And of course I had uh, come up with this spiral myself. I had studied and practiced this spiral, but what is it that enables me to remem rem remember it? So what if I just play the series as it goes? And I'm curious if you're are gonna find out um, what it is, how it's constructed, if I just play it as is rather than jumping around on it. I wish we were in the same room and we could have a discussion. Uh, I'll leave it at the end. Um, um, and I would be curious uh, actually to uh, hear um, your reactions uh, or, and guesses. Um, let me ask what Tolga thinks about this. Tolga, do you think it is an idea to have one round of short um, commentary from the audience if they want to guess uh, what they what, what the structure of what they heard is it's totally up to you if you want it of course uh, I, I would love to hear um, from uh, from from the participants uh, what they hear I can just play it one just, more time just go ahead Hence my glasses. It's not. I mean, they're cool, but it's not to be cool. So, um, so yes. Um, like, like you said, uh, what what what's your name? I can't read it on the screen. Uh, it's Ganesh. Ganesh. Yes. Like uh, like, like Ganesh said, it it is actually it, it actually it is basically actually basically actually. Um, First, uh, first four, four, four notes of oh, a ma ma major scale, in, in this case, starting from sounding D. And then the fourth note becomes the first note of the next first four, four notes of the major scale that starts with that note, which is the fourth note of the previous major scale. Mm -hmm. 
So. This is a very easy thing to remember, I guess. If if you just um, just just know what a major scale is, and if you know what transposition is, anyone can uh, refer to this. You might not have the immediate muscle memory. That's something to practice. Muscle memory is to be built. We 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 don't inherently have muscle memory for anything. But if you know, if if you have the information, if you have the knowledge that you can rely on, then 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 you you you, you know where you are, and uh, it, um, I apologize. It's very difficult for me to like uh, share slides and show show you visual examples uh, um, since. They don't really mean much to me. Um, another side note: uh, Then you guys might uh, ask, like, okay, so how do you, how did you write the book? Well, l luckily, I could, uh, um, I could afford to work with uh, copyists, and uh, I had various assistants uh, along the way to uh, help me um, put what I have in my head and what I can play uh, in writing. But if, if you can at least uh, visualize um, this, this series, of pit, so, series of pitches, several ways to refer back to it is obviously the circle of fourths. And because it folds it fo 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 folds on itself with intervals of a perfect fourth, um, so I I can get I can refer to this type of spiral as a repeating sp spiral. Repeating not in the sense that uh, octaves repeat, but certain presets portion of either an existing scale or set of pitches with their relationships to each other with given intervals is preserved and then folded or transposed to another place which is um, not in an octave re repeating fashion. If you just basically did the same thing, uh, if, if you just say, okay, I have these seven notes, uh, these seven notes, and these seven notes uh, will uh, repeat with a half step after the seventh note. Well, then, then, then you end up in the octaves, and then you basically have the major scale uh, in. Uh, that that could be the spiral you come up with. Uh, good for you. That's fine, but that's just the major scale. And the point is, um, when you when when you start uh, referring to these pitches with box of information you can rely on and recall and build muscle memory of then you'll find yourself playing phrases that you would normally not habitually come up with. That brings my other main uh, quest about improvisation in general. It probably uh, applies to uh, all, all forms of artistic expression, including composition, obviously, but um, how to overcome habitual expression is uh, some, something to continuously be aware of and uh, be, be uh, work around in my uh, very personal, uh, probably not so humble opinion. Um, 
if I play the same exact spiral one more time, if I play another improvisation based on the same exact spiral, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to demonst demonstrate uh, several things I would like to talk about. I at least tried, you tell me if I succeeded, to give the audience the impression that I might even be following an existing uh, predetermined harmonic structure, uh, or I might be uh, playing a composed piece which uses uh, the idea of playing uh, certain phrases and then uh, applying uh, uh, harmonic modulations, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I tried to play around with the possibility of creating more consonant versus more dissonant sounding phrases uh, just still uh, being loyal to the existing predetermined um, spiral. Um, building a spiral uh, using uh, existing uh, portions of existing scales is just one way to uh, uh, come up with spirals. If you if you stack Diminish, excuse me, if you stack diminished triads uh, on top of each other and fold them uh, using just one half step in between, uh, you, you, you would come up with some, something like this. <laughs> If you uh, fold almost full scales, like depending on where, where you start fo folding it, and then start really memorizing and building a muscle memory uh, to, to, uh, to jump to the quote unquote right note in the relative uh, register of your instrument. Uh, then, then you come up with phrases that uh, you, you, you haven't uh, explored, explored before. Um, um, the documentation uh, in, in the book com comes with uh, uh, many, many uh, examples I created myself. It comes with the ex explanation of how uh, one might build their own spirals. Uh, and there's, there's a bunch of uh, transcriptions of, of my of my playing included. Of course, this, this could be uh, easily used as a compositional tool, uh, but, but I feel 
uh, there, there's already uh, uh, a whole world of uh, uh, amazing techniques and tools to generate uh, interesting pitch material for composition. Uh, the whole spectral stuff, for the whole serial stuff. Um, these are already at composer's disposal. How, how, however, to, 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 to improvise using one of those uh, one of those languages, one of those techniques, uh, at least to me, uh, felt extremely, extremely uh, daunting, difficult, whatever, whatever you name it. Of course, uh, I, I would say, well, new generation is doing amazing things. So um, what I'm offering is probably going to become obsolete in a few years, and some twenty-year-old uh, going to come up with. Uh, improvising uh, spectral uh, <laughs> content uh, on clarinet, for example, which is not impossible. It just, it, it, it just goes to show you, uh, we all build, uh, build, um, uh, I'm going to dare to say language uh, of, 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 of expression, uh, referring to existing material, uh, looking elsewhere, merging, consolidating, uh, uh, dist distilling our own version, and uh, just keep, just keep keep exploring. Um, before going to the Q and A, I would like to do one more round of uh, play and ask. So I'll, I'll play another improvisation using a different. Um, spiral and um, see if anyone will be able to or will want to guess what it might be. hands Tolga just um, lead uh, please it's very interesting thought I'm, I'm only gonna answer by saying like what I played was yet another very boring uh, just uh, um, exactly repeating folding kind of uh, model of preset uh, spiral that was the only rule And um, if I if I if I play it like then it's probably really obvious. But when I play. Then, then you don't hear that folding structure, and that's exactly my point. <laughs> if I articulate differently, then. Yeah, no.
basically the most common Japanese uh, pentatonic uh, scale. And you, you, uh, you fold it with that whole step in between. And these are just suggestions and personal uh, examples. Uh, again, if you wish to do so, check out, check out the, the description and the link below. Uh, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're curious, you can just uh, ch uh, check out all the other, exa other, other examples there. Uh, I also um, uh, su suggest and I have explored uh, non-repeating non uh, structures, which, which are much harder to memorize, by the way, because then you, you kind of re rely on di different, different type of your uh, brain uh, to uh, orient yourself with, 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 within, the, within the spiral. If the whole uh, spiral is, is a set of pitches that span over the entire range of your instrument, but there's no uh, repeating pattern in the relationship uh, of the pitches to each other, uh, then it be becomes more challenging to memorize. And that doesn't mean that that will also lead to a more interesting result. Uh, you can still make it sound like just a major scale depending on what you chose in the end. So, um, again, thank you so much for uh, Bearing with me and uh, 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 just uh, peeking through uh, my world uh, in. Uh